Hello and welcome back to Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord. For this episode we are going to talk about the Azerai and we are going to talk about what culture they are based on. We are going to talk about some advantages and disadvantages by playing this faction. We are going to look at the Azerai units and we are going to look at some campaign situational things. If I say something that is wrong in this video, please let me know. And if you disagree with anything at all, please let me know too. And if you agree with me, please let me know that too. I hope you enjoy this video and we are going to start with what culture the Azerais are based on. The Azerais are based on on the Ayyubid dynasty and that dynasty was led by a known character from history named Saladin and I'm not totally sure about this but I think this theory fits and uh, since the Azerites are placed at a desert and have some yeah there's some clues I have found that fits the theory I know that it Internet everywhere in many forums are not that sure what the Azerais are based on But I think we are going to look at IOB dynasty and try to see if it fits the theory So we already talked about the Azerais are placed in the desert of the map So we have that covered that that's the first clue we get the other clue is the noble line units are called Faris and Faris means horseman in Arabic. So Arabia around there we have located maybe this spot. So Faris in Arabic means horsemen. So that was the first clue. The second clue is dates and dates is a fruit that grow all over the place in desert areas and mostly around Egypt, Arabia and that's the first clue too pinpoint the location for where we have to look when we are going to find some history for the asteroid to fit that. So the fourth clue is a name that a unit is called in the game and that is the Mameluk Palace Guards or the Mameluk Horse Archers because the uh, I mean the Mameluks was soldiers fighting in the Ayyubid dynasty and that is crucial for this theory because the Mamluks was actually slaves from Turkey and other areas around that land. So the soldiers that was protecting the sultans in this dynasty was bodyguards that was slaves and they were called Mameluk soldiers. They usually was uh, on horseback but uh, they fought on foot as well. And we can see that in the game here for the Azerais, we have good units called palace guards uh, where the Sultan lives. So I think they are meant to protect the Sultans because they lived in the, in the palace, uh, of course. So we have the Mamluk soldier, which is a big, big clue for this theory. So I think we have the location and based on what time period the other factions are in at the same time well, give or take some years we I think we are have to look at the Ayyubid dynasty which was Egypt, Syria and Yemen basically around there. I have not much more information about this dynasty other than it was a big dynasty that was fighting against uh, the European Christians and uh, well <laughs> this was that and I hope that you can uh, fill in some information here because th there's much more to be said about this and there's much history here um, but I really don't know much about it so I, I, I think I don't want to say anything more because then I'm on very thin ice and may say something wrong. 
So instead, I'm leaving it up to you to write a comment, tell me more about this dynasty, and of course, if you think the SRIs are based on someone else, please let me know, because I really don't know much about the history here. So that could be cool to know more. For now, we are moving on to the in-game faction leader. The Asari are led by the Sultan Junkid, and he is a very influential faction leader. He is extremely aggressive in almost every playthrough I have played. He comes up to conquer some empire or crusade lands. And he do it with style too, because he usually um, conquer a lot of land uh, because he have a lot of gold because he have a lot of cities and a lot of troops and tribes in his clan I mean in his faction so this is a very strong faction and he the faction is led by a strong faction leader too so a bit aggressive I must say if you join with him he is very generous he give you a lot of thieves so being in the SRI uh, in service of Yunkid, I must say is a very good thing. If you start a new game and going for an SRI character, you will have this cultural bonus. Your caravans will be 30% cheaper to build, build and 10% less trade penalty. Well, this is a bonus which you don't see that much in-game, I must admit. Um, trading, well, maybe it's good at the start, but once you get your trading skill up, this doesn't matter too much. So th I, I feel that this bonus is uh, kind of useless in the game. The no penalty on desert is good though, because you can defend the whole area down south in the Azerai territory with high efficiency, with running fast. So that is a good thing, and also running away from bandits there could be a good thing early game. The daily wages of troops in the party are increased by 5% is a very strict and heavy penalty though, especially late game while well, well you will have very expensive and a lot of troops, this can hurt you a ton. So keep that in mind when you choose an SRI character. The SRI starts in a very very good position on the adventure map. They start all the way to the south and they are pretty well protected in the desert, because in the middle of the Azerai kingdom, uh, well, you are protected because you have to travel through the kingdom to get there. And you have eight cities to start with, which is a lot in for a faction in Bannerlord. And, uh, well, the two cities that's most vulnerable is Kayas to the west and the Hosnfolk to the east. Hosnfolk will mainly be attacked by the Crusades and the Southern Empire. Kayas will maybe be attacked by the Vlendians or the Western Empire. I've never seen any other faction actually attacking the Azerites other than the three factions, these three. Um, maybe Vlandia too, but that's not very common, because they don't share a border really. So the Western Empire, the Southern Empire and the Crusades are the main enemies for the Azerites. So if you're going to attack someone, I recommend go and fight the Southern Empire, because, well, uh, they have extremely good cities to the south in the Southern Empire, so Vostrum and Donustica and maybe Onera too is good cities, so if you take them early you can really make them stronger. You can also fight the Crusades, which is possibly the second best option, because then you will have that corner kingdom if you secure the whole Crusade lands, so that could be a good way to go too. You can also fight the Western Empire, but then you will have a lot more enemies suddenly. You will also have a border to the Vlandia and the Batanians. And if you finish conquering the Western Empire, you will also 
face the Northern Empire. So I really recommend go for the Southern Empire really. And you are well protected as I said. Uh, the only way into the kingdom is through Koyas or Husnufolk. So it's easy to defend it and you will move very fast because you have that uh, cultural bonus that will make your party move faster in the deserts. So I think this is the faction that is most easy to protect their home country. Very easy. And maybe the most easy faction if you're going to start somewhere and start your world conquest. As a right have a high supply of dates which is the type of food that usually grow in the desert areas and they have a good supply of grain and fish also. So if you're gonna set up shops here I really recommend set up breweries and well you can get cheap dates here and also grain that you can trade in other areas in the adventure map. If you're going to chase some bandits and gain some skills and gold and stuff early game, I really recommend you to go and visit the bandit outposts in the desert areas. They are pretty easy because they don't have any ranged units and they usually don't have shields too. So if you bring your archers, you can really mess up the bandits from this area and gain some early renown and relation with the villages around in this area. The Aserai have very good units and they are the Aserai Master Archer which is a very feared archer in this game, Aserai Veteran Infantryman which is the shield units and the heavy infantry for this uh, military. We also have the Azurai Mamluk Palace Guard, which is this shock troop with a heavy executioner axe. And we have a very strong and good um, horse archer, which is the Azurai Mamluk Heavy Cavalry. And we also have the Noble Line Unit, which is the heavy cavalry with javelins. Uh, the Azerai Vanguard Faris and I have been doing some testing because they have been an update recently to 1.7.2 and some of the units have changed their loadouts, have new armor, different stuff and all. So I wanted to see is the archers, have they changed? And I saw that uh, I had some shootouts with some archers and the paladin guards are not that good as they were before but the master archers are very much, or maybe not very much better but they are very deadly at least. So I wanted to see how they was uh, if I face a group of battalion Fian champions and see if they actually are better than they are. Uh, that was not the case, and um, the Batanian Fians are still the best archers. But the Azurai Master Archers are not Noble Line units, and they are very good archers. So, the other units in this military is, well, the Azurai Veteran Infantryman, uh, which is a bit uh, more offensive shielded unit and defensive if I can say that so they deal more damage but they are not that heavy armored as for instance the imperial legionaries and matched up with them they're not that good either so well let's just jump to the tier list I have made and let's go through that one so let's just keep talking about the SRI veteran infantry which I have placed at the tier 3 well based on recently, uh, not recently, but the test I did uh, where I tested all the units, they was placed on tier 3 or 2 I think, but I feel, no they were placed at tier 3 I think. And well a bit more offensive units, but they are meant to be the defensive shield in the army and they are not that good at that. So I feel that they had can't be a tier 2 units, but they're still very good units, of course. So not bad units, but maybe not the best shield units. 
So for tier 1 I have placed the Azerai Vanguard Faris and they are extremely fast moving cavalry, heavy cavalry, they can coach their lands and they have javelins and they are actually very accurate with those javelins and can really mess up other cavalry and also uh, infantry with no shields or archers. So they are very effective and good units. I placed them at tier 1 and I really like them. The Azerai Master Archers, well, tier 2, the reason why they're not tier 1 is because they, they die a bit too easy. The armor is very bad. Uh, well, they're archers, they're not meant to be heavy infantry and have heavy armor, of course, but they die, die a bit too easy and they die very easy in melee combat and they're not very good in melee combat. Maybe the weakest archer in melee combat. So I put them down from tier 1 to tier 2. So that, I think that's fair at, well, the Azerai Master Archer is a two, tier 2 archer because ranged, they are deadly. So a very good archer. The Azerai Mamluk Palace Guard is a very good shock troop too and they, their armor have been fixed. I think um, it's not that much change in total armor value, but they look amazing now with some gold on their shoulders and they really live up the name, the Palace Guard. And yeah, they look very good and they are also are very good in combat. They deal a lot of damage. They can one shot almost everyone if they can get a clean shot. So, good shock troops too. And the last unit is the Azerai Mamluk Heavy Cavalry, which is a horse archer. And the thing about these guys is that they can be used as light cavalry, because the Azerai don't have that. So, they run out of arrows pretty fast, because they only have one stack of arrows. But they are extremely deadly because they have the best type of ammunition and they have a very good bow. So they deal very much damage when they hit the target. So they can make a lot of kills that way. And after they're done shooting, they used all their ammunition. They can be used to harass the enemy archers like light cavalry. And that can supply the Azerai Vanguard Faris. So I think actually that this army is very complete. The only thing that I lack here is some um, pikemen and some more uh, anti-cavalry unit. The, it can be a bit tricky to fight other cavalry units with this army. So that's probably their biggest weakness but in offense uh, definitely this army deals a ton of damage and are extremely dangerous. Let's summarize what strengths and weaknesses this faction have in this game and let's start with the strengths. The position on the map is probably the best position in the entire game for any faction. So that is maybe the biggest strength. They also have rich cities with a lot of resources and since they're so well protected they actually can have caravans running through their cities in the entire game. So uh, all the cities will grow in prosperity, caravans are not blocked and can run through and sell and buy wares all the time so that is a very good advantage. You can block some caravans uh, at a certain point north of Quayas but <laughs> You can't stay there forever and block them and they also can run caravans through the other side of the map so it's hard to block this land and I think it's actually impossible too. So the cities will actually just uh, grow as big as possible. Uh, the military for this faction is extremely good, maybe a bit more offensive than defensive. So. If you want some more defense in your army, I think you should mix it with some empire troops, perhaps. Um, but definitely, uh, archers have very good equipments and are very deadly. 
the uh, shock troops are very deadly, uh, the Pharisees, well, almost every line, every branch in this military have high damage, so they are extremely powerful that way. And recruits, that is something also that I have experienced that it's a lot of recruits in this area. I have no clue why, but I it seems to be a lot of high tier recruits in <laughs> almost every uh, village. So it's very easy to build an army extremely fast. You also move very quickly on the desert because of the cultural bonus. So you can, if you lose your army, you can just run down to the desert and rebuild that army very quickly. So that's a good uh, strength too. Yeah, and of course the fast moving in desert, which I already have talked about. The weaknesses aren't that many, but one weakness uh, is that they have expensive horses. And I really mean the Aserai horse. That's a war horse, and that's almost the only... Well, that's the only war horse you can find in the desert, and it's cost around 2000 gold. So it's a very expensive war horse. It's a very fast moving horse, the fastest in the game. Um, so it's a good horse, um, but it's very expensive. So if you want to upgrade your top tier units, which uses a horse and a war horse, you have to pay a lot. So that's a big weakness. They lack anti-cavalry units, and that is a thing for this army. And, uh, well, you can use your shock troops. They're decent against cavalry. Uh, you can use your veteran infantry, but they're not that good. You can also use your pharisees and your uh, horse archers, but they're not very effective like the pikemen from Vlandia and Batania, for instance. So they really lack that in this military. The cultural... Cultural penalty is probably uh, the heaviest penalty for all the factions. Uh, that 5% increase in daily wages for your party is a lot. But since you have so many rich cities, it doesn't really matter. But, but you have to get some cities then, and you have to get your workshops up and running. But I think you can manage that, and then this penalty isn't that big of a deal really so but it's maybe the heaviest penalty for a cultural bonus in this game well to summarize this this is probably the best faction in the whole game in my opinion so that's my opinion and um, well <laughs> what's your opinion maybe the empire have the best units uh, all or all over uh, but the Azerites are extremely close, I think, and especially all the other things like the prosperity, trading and all that. I feel that this faction is a very powerful uh, faction and especially late game this is a very rich faction. So, well, I really recommend you to play this faction because it's really, really good. So what do you think? Are the Azerites any good? Uh, and well, I think actually that the Azerai faction is the easiest to start with if you are going to conquer the whole world. I have actually done that once in a playthrough. So I know that's possible at least. But I want to hear your opinion. Uh, why do you like the Azerites and why do you not like the Azerites? And of course, have I said anything that's not right here? Please let me know in the comments so we can sort it out. Do you disagree with anything? Please let me know too so we can sort that out in the comments. And if you agree with me, please let me know too. And I just have to say thank you so much for watching. And I will making more content for Bannerlord and maybe other games. Let's see. And uh, so I hope I see you in the future. Take care. Bye bye.